Hello and welcome everyone to this video with three goals. The first is to describe a machining calculator that I wrote some time ago and intend to put to rest. The second is to promote cut calculator from the YouTube channel. I'm no expert, but I'm actually a little envious of that channel name. And the third I'll describe in a little bit. When I learn about a new field, I like to implement concepts from it in software. And I figure if I can build concepts I have a decent understanding of that concept. So when I began learning about machining, it only made sense that I would implement a program, or in this case, a Python module that uh, implemented some aspects of machining theory. Now, the equations for theory came from this book. Uh, it's a fantastic book. It's easy to read despite the scary title. And the variable names are used consistently throughout the book. And this is really important because if you go and pull together equations from different sources online, there's a good chance that they'll be inconsistently, uh, the variable names will be inconsistently uh, used. They'll have inconsistent meaning. Units may be different or who knows. Now to ensure that doesn't happen in my program, I use the Python units module. And this forces uh, consistent uh, accumulation and cancellation of units throughout arithmetic expressions. So if the resultant has the wrong units, then we know that there's a problem with the expression. This also means that I can't use rules of thumb or magic numbers. Uh, I have to start with fundamental equations that are composed into uh, equations of machine theory. After the Python module, I needed an, an interface to share it with others. Uh, I thought of using a callout from Fusion 360 or building a tab in Linux CNC, but started with a web interface. If you use Fusion 360, you likely recognize these thumbnails. Uh, there are two machining applications. The first is a drill bit size chart. Now, instead of flipping through pages of drill bits, we can filter the rows by the intended use. In this case, we're going to prep holes for imperial uh, threads, and we can further filter by uh, using a search string over the rows. The second application is the one we're here to see is the machining assistant. I've only implemented drilling operations in the machining assistant. The machining assistant is aware of the capabilities of the machine. There are three machines that have been implemented the uh, Precision Matthews with the uh, 25 with the original BLDC motor, uh, one with a 750 watt uh, servo motor from DMM, and another variant with a 2.2 kilowatt 24,000 RPM secondary high speed spindle. Now with this small diameter hole and shallow depth, we're not gonna be limited by the machine. Uh, there's a summary of the adrenaline operation, and then the machining parameters are supplied to Fusion 360 and calculated by Fusion 360. There are blocks of G code that can be typed into an MDI. And depending upon your controller, uh, you might need to use the basic G code or have CAN cycles for standard drilling or PEC drilling cycles. There are imperial and metric expressions with uh, implicit or explicit calculation of Z depth. An alternative way to show the Fusion 360 parameters is to highlight them on a mocked up dialog. What is in red is the calculated parameters that have been pasted onto the dialog, and then blue are those that are calculated by Fusion 360. So type in the ones in red, and the blue ones will be calculated for you. It's important to look at depth, diameter, ratio, determine if you're at that standard or peck drilling boundary. And uh, there's, uh, this operation is not limited because it's small diameter, a small uh, depth. Um, here are the demands of the operation on the machine. We have substantial headroom on, uh, in all aspects. Maybe we want to try to increase the material removal rate. Um, it's shown with the uh, alternative parameters and also uh, their uh, percentage relative to the recommended parameters. And then the um, uh, percentages relative to the capacity of the machine. Power, uh, spindle speed, uh, z-axis velocity, and z-axis thrust force. At each dot here is the power RPM requirement 
for that speed feed. These are the specifications that were passed to the uh, Python machining module of the material and the machine's capacity. Uh, the recommended parameter with respect to the uh, uh, power speed torque curves of the motor. The blue is the recommended RPM uh, power requirement and it's well below the uh, continuous and uh, the torque and continuous power curves. And the other two points are uh, plus or minus 10% of the recommended. We're well below the maximum thrust. If we increase the drill diameter and the depth, the machine will be uh, limiting. If we look in the machining parameters, it says that we're limited by uh, torque and thrust. If we jump to the demands, we are well outside of available power from the machine and um, if we, uh, we could consider alternative uh, uh, parameters in this table, maybe cut the material removal rate in half and let's see, be, be within the machine's capabilities. Uh, you can also drop down to capacity and see how the recommended parameters are exceeding the intermittent power curve. We're below the intermittent torque curve, but we're exceeding the intermittent power curve. We want to move those down by reducing uh, material removal. Remember, uh, material removal rate is proportional power. And then the other problem that we have with these parameters is that they exceed the available uh, thrust as well. So yeah, extreme case, uh, definitely not going to be doing that operation on uh, PM25. Uh, this code is all on GitHub and you're free to do with it as you like. Um, and remember, the, I also wanted to highlight the, the new calculator, which is this cut calculator uh, by, I'm no expert, but uh, I, I think it's always um, so, so sad that you have such nice work like this and it just doesn't get as, uh, the, the number of views that it deserves. Um, this is his calculator and this is for milling. Okay, this isn't drilling, but uh, he has um, a CNC router, a uh, high-speed spindle, um, probably never uses drill. So he has focused on his calculator on, um, on uh, mills. And I think this graph is just really neat. This is showing the engagement of the teeth as the cutter uh, rotates. So if you increase the number of teeth, then you get uh, better engagement. If you increase the uh, helix angle, the engagement, the average engagement uh, increases. And, and he talks about this in his video in regards to how this graph can uh, be used to predict the vibration that you're likely to have with um, the cutter. And again, uh, he's using a, a high speed uh, cutter and uh, he said low rigidity mill. So um, I have a low rigidity mill and a low speed cutter. So yeah, I'm even more limited. Uh, and, and, and he's also released all his code open source, which is uh, very cool. So um, give this, give this a, a try and be sure to uh, take a look at this video. Uh, some, some good work here. Why make this video? if you don't intend to continue developing these tools. Uh, I have three reasons and it gets to uh, that uh, final goal. Uh, for me, uh, it's hard to finish a project, but by sharing it with you, it's a lot easier to step away from it. The second is the promotion and a new tool and the promotion of a new developer. And the third is uh, asking you for help. Um, and that is to, in the comments, add references to books that have been useful or online tools that have been useful and uh, include what you like and dislike about the tools. And my hope is that that accumulation of your knowledge in that space will be helpful for future developers to build the next better tools.